In this video, I want to talk with you about a few aspects regarding pharmacodynamics of a drug. Do you know the difference between agonist and antagonists? Do you know how agonists and antagonists affect the efficacy and potency of a drug? Let's look at these terms. This concept is important to understand drug receptor interactions for the USMLE. Let's begin with agonists. Agonists, are also called as full agonists, are drugs which bind to a receptor and then produce the maximum response, or they produce the desired response. An example can be epinephrine. When epinephrine binds to the beta-1 receptor, it produces the desired response, which is increase in heart rate. Now let's take a look at the different kind of agonists. When a partial agonist binds to the receptor, it produces less than maximal response, or in other words, less than 100% response as that produced by a full agonist. A partial agonist has lower efficacy than a full agonist. Sometimes when a partial agonist is given in the presence of a full agonist, it may behave like an antagonist just because of the reason that both of the drugs will compete or bind to the same receptor. Some partial agonists can behave sometimes like full agonists or even like antagonists, depending upon which receptor they are using. An example will be pentazosine. Pentazosine is a full agonist at the kappa receptor, but it is a partial agonist at the mu receptor. Now let's look at inverse agonist. When an inverse agonist binds to the drug receptor, it produces an effect which is opposite to the effect produced by a full agonist. For example, if the agonist increases the heart rate, binding of the inverse agonist will cause a decrease in the heart rate. In the presence of a full agonist, an inverse agonist behaves like an antagonist. An example will be the effect of naloxone on the mu receptors. Now let's take a look at the different types of antagonists. An antagonist by itself does not have any inherent activity on the receptor. When an antagonist binds to a receptor, it simply prevents the agonist from binding to the receptor. An example would be propranolol, which is a beta blocker. When it binds to the beta-1 receptor, it prevents binding of epinephrine to the beta-1 receptor, and that's how it prevents an increase in the heart rate. In a system that has pair receptors, maximum efficacy is reached even before receptor occupancy is 100%. An antagonist can inhibit the actions of all types of agonists. To learn more about the action of antagonists, let's talk a bit about what is efficacy, potency, and what are spare receptors? Efficacy is the maximal or 100% response that is produced after a drug binds to a receptor. Whereas, potency is the dose or amount of drug that is needed to produce a given response. It is determined by affinity of the drug to its receptor and also by the number of receptors that are available. Both efficacy and potency can be plotted on a dose-response curve. What are spare receptors? Spare receptors are receptors that are present in excess of the number of receptors that are needed to produce a maximum response. Antagonists can be competitive, non-competitive, or irreversible. A competitive antagonist binds to the same receptor as the agonist. It decreases the potency of the drug, but it does not change the efficacy of the drug. The action of a competitive antagonist can be reversed by just increasing the dose of the agonist. An example will be flumazenil, which is an antagonist at the GABA receptor. For that reason, flumazenil is used as an antidote in the treatment of benzodiazepine poisoning. On the other hand, a non-competitive antagonist binds to a different site than that bound by an agonist. It decreases the efficacy of a drug, but does not change the potency of a drug. 
the effect of a non-competitive antagonist cannot be reversed by just increasing the dose of the agonist. An example would be ketamine, which is a non-competitive antagonist at the NMDA receptor. An irreversible antagonist binds to the receptor with high affinity, and then it cannot be displaced. It behaves like a non-competitive antagonist in the sense that it decreases the efficacy but does not change the potency. But if spare receptors are present, then an irreversible antagonist will decrease the efficacy as well as the potency. So to recap, an agonist binds at a receptor to produce the desired response. A partial agonist also activates the receptor but produces less than the maximal response. An inverse agonist binds to the receptor and produces an effect that is opposite to the effect of a full agonist. An antagonist does not have any inherent activity on the receptor. It just prevents binding of the agonist on the receptor. A competitive antagonist decreases the potency of a drug without changing the efficacy of a drug, while a non-competitive antagonist and irreversible antagonist will decrease the efficacy of a drug without changing the potency of a drug. Hi there, I'm Sujata, founder of Grace USMLE Tutoring. I partnered with Achievable to create a comprehensive USMLE Step 1 course for medical students. It combines my years of USMLE tutoring experience with Achievable's powerful software. To learn more and gain access to a free trial, visit achievable.me.